Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 340 doing the top 10 cards from Ether Revolt. This video is done right between the pre-release and the full release. So if you've got any comments on these, if you think I've missed an awesome card that you think is going to be amazing in standard, vintage, legacy, modern, EDH, please post them in the comments. Six months from now, we can compare your list to my list. Let's jump right in here. This is a super interesting set with a lot of honorable mentions. We've got a 3-4 that bounces back to your hand and can control vehicles. Very weird. I can't find a place for it yet. That's why it's on the honorable mention, but it seems to have some cool synergies. The Spire is potentially amazing in vintage deck. Whirl of Invention. Now, this a lot of people have compared to Court of Calling, and I did until I reread it. It's always going to cost three blue awesome EDH card, may even have a spot in standard, but the fact that you can't get rid of that three blue moves it to the honorable mentions here. Planar Bridge, over the top, crazy card, lots of mana, it's going to be a fun casual card. Exquisite Angel, amazing artwork there. If you would lose the game, instead, exile the Archangel and your total becomes equal to your starting life total. Seems like a great card in Commander and possibly in some kitchen table or more casual formats. Disallow. This is the Void Slime upgrade. Nobody really wants to splash green in their mono blue control decks and now you don't need to. Lots of cool honorable mentions here. So many that I've got 11 on my top 10 list, which is really more like a top 20 list because lots of these also have other cards to mention. But we've got an elf here, a legendary elf that turns other creatures with plus one plus ones well it could even be itself into mana dorks this is going to be amazing in edh turn your entire plus one plus one counter army into mana producers i can see lots of synergies for this card i would pick up foils specifically for commander i don't know if it's got a place in standard which is why it's number 11 but it seems like a great addition to those counter decks. In the number 10 spot here, I've got some humans on this list with a honorable mention here to Thalia because of something else that's going to be on this list later. But just remember, creatures come into play tapped. Very, very important for another card on this list. But now we've got Pia and Kari Wonderful humans, nice curve. There's going to be a really aggressive red white humans deck that if i wasn't playing combo control i would definitely look at playing red white humans very cool design and what could be better than a legendary 2-1 red monkey creature i mean what kind of a token is that that's crazy the number nine spot here, I've got our new reducer for spells. Now, Goblin Electromancer's been around for a long time. I like the one three better though in combo decks, gonna help you stay alive a little bit, but also the looting ability when you counter spells could be extremely important. I can see those red blue combo decks going to three Electromancers and two Barrels. Number eight spot here is a card that just spiked recently. I'll cover it in my financial video coming up here in the next few days a little bit more. But if you've got a control deck with a lot of artifacts in it, this could become the new Tomb Stalker or the new Gurmog Angler. Could get very, very cheap to cast, has a very nice ability on it. I'm super happy with it overall and should be a win condition in control decks. In the number seven spot here, I've got the new 4-4 vehicle that is powered by Planeswalkers. I see some wonderful synergy here with Liliana. I hope there's a deck that really makes this piece of equipment work really well. In the number six spot here, I've got Paradox Engine. This is going to be a commander favorite for years to come. Not only does it combo well with Candelabra of Thanos, but I think pretty much everything combos well with Candelabra of Thanos, but a bunch of mana producing artifacts, some creatures that you want to have untapped. And really, I can see this not only as a combo piece, but also a wonderful utility piece. We've got the new Tezzeret in here at five, and I know that's going to surprise a lot of people. At four casting cost, I originally thought, eh, 
eh, this guy's not so good. But then I looked at standard again, and there's going to be a control deck where Tez is really at the heart of that deck. We've got a reasonable counterspell here. We've got some draw card engines with improvise, and Tez just plays really well in that control shell. In the number four spot here, I've got the White Legend Sarum. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle, draw a card. That's whenever you cast, they don't even have to come into play. White is so short on card draw, especially in Commander. This could slot in really well to my eight and a half tails deck or even be a Commander in and of itself. Buy them, buy the foils, they're really cheap right now. It's gonna be a great Commander long-term and may even have a spot in some standard decks. Number three spot here, I've got the Copycat, the Combo Kitty. Ooh, this card may be the first card to be banned. What I'm also mentioning here, though, is I've got a whole video on the Combo Kitty, is look at the other red, blue, and white cards that could slot into this deck and see which of those cards may play really well. The deck build that I really like currently is a combo deck that also uh, has some utility and has an energy aspect to it. Harness Lightning could be really nice removal there. The Cloud Laser could help keep you alive. Um, World Virtuoso is another interesting card, especially if you've got a whole energy sub theme. The number two spot here, I've got Trophy Mage, which should surprise absolutely no one as I did a whole video on this awesome card. Amazing EDH card. Hopefully it sees a little bit of play in standard also, but I would definitely be looking for my foils here. She is going to be a powerhouse going and fetching your swords, Crucible of Worlds. Fatal Push, number one. Removal, upgrade, strictly better than most other black removal out there. This could make waves in everything except Vintage and might even see a little bit of play in Vintage. Uh, fetch lands make it super easy to activate your ability to bounce creatures or play it after attack. You may even be able to get up to those four casting cost creatures. This is a strict upgrade 90% of the time over Smother and Cruel Edict. In Modern, there are so many targets that it kills without even having to get the Revolt activation. Death Shadow, Tarmogoyf, most of the entire robots deck. I mean, awesome card. Now, would I buy it at its pre-release price of like $5? No. I am hoping this is going to be an FNM promo. If Wizards really wants to get people to show up to FNM, take awesome cards like this and make them promos. Would be so happy. But even if it doesn't, the $30 foil price and the $5 pre-sale price is a little bit high. This is an uncommon. It's going to be easy to get out of packs, but it's going to be well worth it. Fatal push. I can see a... Flawless victory, fatality in someone's future here. What are your top three picks for this set? Post them in the comments, and especially if there's a card that I missed entirely in my review, I learn from the things that you post in the comments. To gaze into the future and find those hidden trophies, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you to my sponsor in chess.com. And until next time, choose your cards wisely.